Well, it's Thursdays, 4 p.m. Reinvent's almost coming to a close. I really appreciate you guys coming out and hearing us talk about the new service that we just launched today at Werner's Keynote. If you missed the announcement or um, you are here by chance because the other sessions were full, don't worry, we'll quickly walk you through what is the AWS Serverless Application Repository. Uh, with me on stage is Daniel, who is from Datadog. He's a product manager at Datadog. And Michael, who is an evangelist at Here, which is a location-based services company. And we're going to talk to you about the AWS Serverless Application Repository. So what is the AWS Serverless Application Repository? The, the, this service allows customers to easily discover, deploy, and publish applications in the AWS cloud. It's a collection of serverless applications um, which are published by developers in the community, partners, and companies that are working in the serverless ecosystem. Now customers can easily discover and deploy and publish everything from code samples to mobile backends, web backends, to complete applications and get started with AWS and the serverless compute in a few minutes. This enables developers to share their solutions for companies to connect with customers and fundamentally enables customers to move faster with the serverless ecosystem. I like to sort of compare this to the age-old adage that developers don't let developers build code from scratch. So now some of you will be like, no, I write all my code on my, in my ID. And I'll encourage you to think about the import statements you make. This is sort of the equivalent of that for serverless microservices or architectures that you can easily deploy into your AWS account through a click of a button shared by other AWS developers publicly, or you can privately share applications within your AWS account between organizations and departments that are building interesting serverless solutions. OK, let's take, take a step back a second and talk about what is a serverless application. A serverless application is one that does not require you to provision, administer, or manage servers. It enables you to focus just on the business logic and the customer scenarios that you want to solve without having to think about a fleet of servers or, or purchasing capacity for peak at scale. Instead, you let AWS Lambda, API Gateway, and other AWS services provide you the availability and the scale that you're, that you're required to meet your customers' needs. With the serverless application, AWS handles all these capabilities, allowing you to focus on product innovation and getting to market faster. AWS provides a, a set of serverless applications and components that enable you to build these kind of applications. These include, this includes Lambda, which is a compute server's offering, Amazon API Gateway, which is the API Gateway, front-end offering that we provide, DynamoDB <coughs> for databases, S3 for storage, SNS for messaging and notification services, and many more. A lot of our customers have been using and moving to the serverless architecture because of the flexibility it provides them in their work environments and how quickly they can move to the cloud because of the economics provided by these services. Because you're no longer paying for idle capacity, now you can really focus on making sure that you reach your business goals the fastest. To give you a few examples, we have, servers, we have customers innovating on serverless across a variety of categories and domain segments. For example, Zillow and Localytics build analytics applications using API Gateway, AWS Lambda, operational dashboards, live dashboards. Twilio and Splunk build interactive backends, mobile and web apps, webhooks. Thomson Reuters and FireEye build data workflows, including content management and ETO workflows. Last but not least, Netflix and Autodesk use serverless to build autonomous IT policy engines and infrastructure management. The one thing that's really interesting about serverless is not only the fact that it takes away the need for you to manage servers, it exposes a very basic and simple event-driven programming model, which fits into the modern day microservices architectures that has enabled a lot of our customers to move faster and provide services faster to their end customers. So what are the challenges we, customers were facing? As many of, of our customers move and, move and think about serverless, they all, all, our customers were telling us that finding, cloning, building, deploying these applications and understanding these architectures was difficult for them. 
Instead, they require some help of a consultant, perhaps go on and, and get help from other developers in the community, look at code samples, copy and paste them, make sure they build, make sure they function properly, make sure they set up their roles and permissions appropriately in their accounts. Having to do all of that was extremely daunting and complicated for them because they were so new to this paradigm. While the paradigm provides flexibility and scale and gives you this extremely great economics of the public cloud, the challenges they were facing was how do they get started? A couple of years ago, we launched AWS Lambda Blueprints. Lambda Blueprints are great. They're a template for a function, gets customers started for a particular event source on AWS. For example, we have Blueprints that enable customers to quickly read and write to S3, have blueprints for Kinesis streams. However, the challenges with blueprints is there is a limited set that AWS produces and curates for our customers. These blueprints only create a single function, but no other resource. And serverless applications are a lot more than that. As I mentioned in a couple of slides ago, serverless components of the other services that we provide enable to build a full microservices architecture that's fault tolerant and highly available in the AWS public cloud. Because there's limited selection and limited languages, customers are not able to get all the kind of content they really need because we curate them and provide them. And it's not linked to GitHub. So you can't really actually go look at the source and do the additional, I get what you're trying to do, but I want to make modifications from it in the way that rapidly enab enables developers to produce more applications and more code. So while our customers love blueprints, about 86% of our customers in the Lambda console today start with the blueprint, they rapidly get realized they need more. So where do they go? They go to GitHub, the de facto open source repository of the world. While GitHub provides them the ma massive selection, it leads them thinking about what is the right application that they should choose. Are they picking the right application? Does it work for their scenario? Who is it from? But fundamentally, once you have the discovery problem solved, how do you build and really deploy that application? There is no transient hook from GitHub and natively into AWS that enables customers to deploy applications or get their functions set up with the right permissions and roles. So you have to do all that yourself. So while GitHub provides this great community experience and Blueprints provide this great authoring experience, there's something in the middle that our customers were asking for us to solve. So we decided to go on a journey in asking our customers and other partners, what would we build that would enable our customers to get more out of serverless and get them started even faster? So we took a few tenants. We said we want to build a service that enables customers to find relevant applications anywhere, meaning where they already are. One example is they start in the Lambda console. Customers wanted the need for both being able to find public applications or make them public for anyone's use, just like they do today on GitHub, or share them privately within the organization, such as a financial company that has applications for a variety of departments and is sharing out with the right accounts and groups so that they can make use of serverless architectures and move faster with their departments and units. And then it had to be very simple construction of both the deployment part of it and also the publishing part of it. Additionally, some tenants. We wanted to make sure that this was from the community. So we're taking the best of what GitHub has to offer by allowing anyone to contribute and participate in this. We want to make sure it's open source so customers can go back to the actual source code on GitHub and understand what the kind of licensing and all that, that comes with it. And we wanted to actually standardize on an application spec, which is the serverless application model. I'll go over that a little bit later when I describe the publishing steps. OK, that's enough talk. How about I show you guys a quick demo, an interactive demo, and what it looks like to actually consume some of these applications in your Lambda account. I'll switch over here for a second. OK, let me quickly log into my account. Oops. So we'll go through. All right, let's go into Lambda. I log into Lambda. Lambda has, obviously, you'll see that I have my functions that I've created in my account in the North Virginia region. I say I want to go create a new function. And you see three options. 
You can author from scratch, obviously. You still have the existing blueprints, so the templates for a single function, or you can choose from a large variety of serverless applications published by developers, by our partners, by the AWS community at large, and other companies who are contributing to the space. So you see we have over 100 of these that we got started with. I'll search for um, the app that I published. I click on it, and here it is. This is one of my applications that's privately created my account where I've been deploying and testing and making sure it works. A couple of things to note here. We'll show the application, some description, who is it published by, number of deployments so you understand how popular that is in the ecosystem right now in that, in that region. Because I've deployed this application already, what I just want to show you first is some of the details we expose. So you have an application, you have an application name. This translate in, tr translates into a stack that we create on your behalf. So you can give it whatever name you really want. We expose the details of the application, the name, the source code. Obviously, I haven't put a good source code link here, but GitHub <coughs> will obviously be the, the option here. Labels for it. The permissions that it uses, and I'll show you why I don't require any additional permissions than what Lambda already provides. And the actual template. This is a template that we then go execute using CloudFormation. Now, this is a little bit of learning for some, someone who's new. They don't have to look at this. They can just fundamentally deploy the app. But what's important here to see is this application is not simply deploying a single function. It's taking an API gateway API as defined in the events portion of the, of the application template and making sure that it's tied to this AWS serverless function that it also creates with it has a readme and a license file so people can further make sure they, they understand that. And I've already deployed one application which results in this function that was created a little while ago. Let's click on that. Once we click on this function that was created a little while ago, you see that you, you get to manage that function or set of functions just like you would do today. Nothing changes. So the application contains, has a con, sort of a container sort of, a, of a abstraction that says, I will define multiple resources, that being API gateway resources, serverless resources like functions or a DynamoDB table, and we do, do the hard work in deploying the application on your behalf. Once it's deployed, you can manage it, invoke it, and use it just like you would do today. All right. Once we, this is just a basic publishing step. Um, let's go through making sure we can deploy, show you an actual deployment. Okay, let's do Firehose syslog, seems like a popular one. A couple other notes. The applications can define a parameter. This parameter is where, where the customers can customize the application based on what the developer that has submitted the application uh, is requesting. In this case, it's requesting a function name parameter, I'll say, and a table name, I'll say my name here. I'll look at the details. Uh, in this case, we have policies, the ones that the permissions that the application requires, something you can easily review. This requires an invoke policy, gives Lambda the permission to invoke another function, a DynamoDB CRUD policy, which is create, update, delete, a DynamoDB table that the app can create, and a DynamoDB read policy as well. I'll click deploy. In the meantime, I'll open up the second portion of it. There you go. Right now, the app is being deployed. This is actually triggering off a CloudFormation up, stack up uh, creation, and you will start seeing the, the resources that it starts creating for you. And once it's done, it will show you the done state, and then we can go review all the resources that it creates. Let's move over. Now, if the, that was the consumption flow, a single click of a button exposes an application. You configure a few parameters. You click deploy, and the applications are made available. This means all the resources, the Lambda artifacts, zip files, all there for you. And now you can start using the application. How do customers publish an application? For that, we also have developed a publisher experience within the, Lambda, within the AWS console. And you, as you can see, I have already created the sample app that I showed you that I could discover a little while ago. Let's look at this application. 
This application I have provided as details. There's an ARN for that because it's a res AWS resource. The creation time. This application is private, meaning I did not want to share this with the world. This is something I was working on. But it showed up when I was searching for it because it was shared, it was my own personal application. Now organizations can share with other AWS accounts as principles, and we have APIs exposed for that, and shows version details. So what does it look like to build a new application? Let's quickly go through that workflow. We have an application name, the author, some description of the application, labels. If you want to make this application public, you have to provide a license file. That is one of the, from the, one of the open source initiative licenses. And you have a drop down you can choose from. And we generate the license for you that you can immediately edit. You will also see we provide a readme file that you can mark up to describe your application in more detail than what we provide, give you the ability for in the description, and, and explain what you're doing to the customer. A semantic version, a code URL, and your SAM template. This is where you actually define your application. So let's take a moment and see that SAM definition. Actually, I can show you the SAM definition. Once again, I shall pause for one second. We're going back to the consumption flow. Look, that the, all the resources have been created. The application has been deployed in my account, and now I can use it. To show you the templates more easily that I can have published, I'll go back to the Lambda console. I'll search for my application. Now look at that. That's the template that I uploaded in for my sample application. But those are the steps. Those are really the steps to really create an application, make it available to publicly to customers by clicking on a toggle or keeping it private and sharing it personally with accounts using our APIs. And on the consumption side, you're, as you saw, I went through finding an app, configuring it, deploying it successfully in my account, and all the resources now are available to me for, those, for that application. Um, as you can see, it, I created, this was what I created earlier, and this is what just got created as I deployed this application three minutes ago. And I click on it, as I said, this could be just, just the same way you would manage any existing functions, <coughs> but now you have all of them and connected, and you can test them out and, and use them as you would like. Okay. All right, I'll go back to my slide. Let's try that. So that was consuming applications, and we also talked about publishing applications. A little bit on the publishing side, let's quickly describe what that looks like for some of those who are not familiar with the serverless application model. The serverless application model is a simplification and an open source spec that we launched last year at reInvent, enabling customers to rapidly create serverless apps that they can, sh or they can manually share with, their, uh, with others um, through GitHub or uh, a file that they share and attach in an email. What does the spec look like? A couple of very quick comments. When you create a SAM application, you provide a transform, which, provides, which tells CloudFormation to do some additional transformations on this, on this template. So we have about four or five lines of code that get expanded into about 25, 30, or 40 lines of code in CloudFormation, but those two lines enable you to simply create a very simple function without having to think about all of the additional capabilities that CloudFormation provides, because you really want to get to creation of, of just a function and, and, and make that work in your account. Once you create that application, you want to package it, meaning you have your local <coughs> Lambda zips. And what this requires you to do is that you would zip up your Lambda packages, make them available in some sort of an S3 bucket run a command to make sure that your SAM templates references those buckets in the template itself. And then you would go back to the console experience or use our APIs to go make the application available. OK, I've shown you a demo of publishing. What I want to talk about next is who is contributing and how are customers making, how are our partners in our ecosystem uh, is really actually excited about what we're doing here. 
So Daniel and Michael will talk about their very specific areas and how they have contributed here to, to the serverless application repository as public applications. But we have customers like partners like Tensor IoT, Splunk, Agilism, BBC, SignalFX, Datadog here that are actively have already contributed or will actively contribute to the to this ecosystem before the end of the year. With that, let me introduce Daniel. Uh, who is from Datadog, he's a product manager there, and he will describe how Datadog has used this repository to get closer to their customers in AWS. Thank you, thank you. So like someone said, I'm a product manager at Datadog, and for those of you who don't know, Datadog is a SaaS infrastructure and application monitoring tool. Uh, we collect metrics, events, metadata from the various parts of your infrastructure, pull them all into Datadog, let you do intelligent alerting, dashboarding, and analytics. Uh, it's a powerful operation tool designed to keep your operations running smoothly. We have an open source agent that is our primary uh, method for collecting metrics, but we also have over 200 integrations with various services so that we can ensure that all of your information can be tracked in Datadog. Um, we love AWS. Uh, we are close partners with them. We have been for a long time. And like I said, we integrate with dozens and dozens of AWS specific services. And we do this in a couple ways. Uh, we have uh, our agent, which can run on uh, EC2s, as well as container services like ECS and now Fargate. And we also allow customers to integrate uh, through CloudWatch and other APIs to get data from services where there isn't an agent. Um, and over the course of our partnership with AWS, we've developed uh, integrations that utilize Lambda to allow customers to get even more metrics and events and tags and whatnot into Datadog. And there are two I want to highlight today that uh, we've developed and we are excited to now publish in the serverless repository. And the first is around VPC flow logs. Uh, VPC flow logs allow you to capture information about traffic going in and out of your virtual private clouds. Uh, there's a lot of awesome use cases for, for these flow logs, um, including security, troubleshooting, uh, why traffic might be, might be stopping. Um, all of a sudden, you're seeing a large number of rejections to a certain IP address. All these are captured in those flow logs. So they have a really awesome use case. Um, but how do you get them into Datadog? Uh, well, these flow logs are generated continuously, and they're sent to CloudWatch logs. Right? They're stored there. They're nicely formatted in CloudWatch logs. Um, but in Datadog, we want to grab those. We want to have those so you can see them alongside the rest of your metrics. Uh, you want to see if, you know, if there's a correlation between a change in uh, traffic and some system metric or some business metric. So we designed a solution that enables you to do that, and it utilizes Lambda. And how it works is we have a Lambda function that customers can uh, set up in their account, which parses through those logs uh, using a trigger and uh, uh, modifies them to format nicely as metrics and send them to Datadog. And up until this point, uh, we've had to have customers copy and paste code from a GitHub. Like someone said, right? There's this disconnect between something like GitHub and Lambda. And um, that's you know, changing now. So with this, you can get some awesome time series metrics, uh, including tags into Datadog. Right? You can see acceptances and rejections, uh, number of bytes, the traffic coming in and out of your VPC. And we enrich all of those metrics with tags so that you can uh, get down to data that is important to you. So our second solution uh, that we're bringing to the serverless repository is RDS enhanced monitoring. So RDS, the relational database service, uh, provides um, or, or emits metrics to CloudWatch at the hypervisor level. At, you know, um, but sometimes you want to get metrics down at the operating system level that your, that your database instance is running on. And that's what enhanced monitoring does. Uh, it collects super low, uh, super granular metrics down to one second, actually, um, on things like CPU, memory, I.O. Um, and again, it ships them to CloudWatch logs. Um, but if you want to get those into Datadog, uh, 
we have to use Lambda as well. So again, we have customers set up a, a Lambda in their account through a copy and pasting through GitHub, and that Lambda uh, looks for those logs, parses them again, and ships them on off to Datadog. So I, and um, there's a lot of metrics that this integration sends that I couldn't even paste it here, um, but you can check them out on this, on this full list. Um, it's a great addition uh, to the rest of the metrics that we collect, uh, as well as the metrics that you can get from Datadog through other integrations. So I, you noticed a pattern, right? Copy and pasting from GitHub. There's this uh, construction friction in setting up, in setting up these solutions. Um, you have to go to a GitHub, make sure you copy and paste the code right, set up the Lambda, make sure that you set up the policies correctly, um, make sure that you set up KMS keys correctly. Um, so there's this initial friction in creating these Lambdas that's preventing customers from getting to monitoring and making sure their systems are running. Um, and then the second problem is, well, what if we want to update this Lambda function? What if we come up with new metrics or new tags we want to add? Or we, you know, we, we've discovered that there's uh, more information we can get from these logs. Well, we have to reach out to customers and have this back and forth to get them to update this Lambda function um, because it's all owned by them and the code is uh, owned by us. However, that's, you know, that's going away. Um, thanks to the serverless repository. So setting up these functions is as easy as Salman just showed. Uh, you, it's you know, kind of like downloading an app on your phone. You just go to the rep repository, search for a keyword that uh, is important to you, that you're looking for, and you can install it in a matter of seconds. Uh, second is updating those functions. It is super easy, both for us and for the customer. We can publish a new version with any updates, and the customer can seamlessly receive those updates without having to copy and paste code from GitHub or requiring a back and forth through email or some phone call to get them to update. Super easy. And the, another way that it is, is great is when we come up with new functions, right? We, we have new solutions that we want to introduce. We can simply publish them to this, to this repository and, and they're there. Um, and we're really excited about the future of this. We have a lot of new solutions coming um, that we're excited to bring the, to, this, to the serverless repository. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of how Datadog is utilizing uh, the serverless repo and how we will continue to do so in the future. And I'm going to hand it back to Salman now. OK, okay thanks. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, you know, it will be worth, before I bring on Michael, to show some of the applications that have been published. If we just quickly switch back by Datadog that are available today, the, the two that were mentioned. Give me a second. Let me switch back on. Here we go. So this is our public website, where you can actually see all the public applications available. I'll type in Datadog. And there you go. You have the Datadog VPC flow logs and the Datadog RDS enhanced applications right there at your fingertip. You can find them also in the Lambda console. You can click on them, configure them to your heart's content, depending on what you want, and you can deploy them within seconds. Now, you have not only all the capability that they are providing, but you also have the update capability. You also have the additional discovery capability when they publish something new. And they're not the only ones who are, going, who are actually interested in contributing actively, which is how I'm going to introduce my next speaker. Michael. Michael is from here, as I mentioned. He's a developer um, evangelist at, for here, their location-based services company. And I let him speak on what here does and how they're excited about using the serverless repository. Thank you. Well, it certainly is very exciting to be in this session. And it, it brings to mind for me, and I'm curious to find out if the question of location or the question of where has been relevant to you this week. I'd be surprised if it's not. Have you not once asked the question where? If you haven't, you're amazing. Because this is a huge conference. You know, there's been uh, folks with the ask me's on their shirts. Oh, I've seen a lot of them uh, being asked. And you could see that when they're talking to someone, they're pointing over here or there, helping people out. Or some are holding the banners to help people out because location's relevant. Location's relevant in, lo in our technology as well. 
Here Technologies has been providing location data and services because it's important, it's relevant. You know, whether your app actually uses that directly or you need location information for strategic analysis, you're going to need location information. We provide that information. We're even excited about beyond to the autonomous world. But to get you started now, I'm with a developer relations group. We would like to get developers involved. We want to make that simple. But there's something that you should know about location services, even when it's among people. And, and there was an example of this at the expo recently. Someone said, do you know where this thing is? And someone you know, got their phone out and said, let me check the app. Oh, it's requiring me to log in. Well, we'll abandon that path, and let's go find someone with a banner and ask me because the technology failed. It was, it, the thing is, is that we're impatient when it comes to location. We want it now. It should be easy to consume, whether it's in person or with technology. So it should be very easy for you to just quickly get into location services. So what is here going to do to make that easy for you? Well, first of all, you know, step one, easy. You got to register at developer.here.com as a, as a developer because what you really need is the app ID and the app code that are requirements for you to make calls to our APIs or use our mobile SDKs. So whether you choose a, a free trial or the, the public basic plan that's free, play it round. Make it easy. So that's step one. You have to do that. So what could be done today? Well, someone could say, OK, fine. I'm going to create a mobile app or a website. I now have my app ID and my app code. And now you, you could start making those calls to the HERE API. So this could be an approach right here. But you might look at that and say, well, but in today's world, it's not that simplistic. Does that mean we have to handle all the failover stuff in the client? Do I have to handle any performance optimizations in the client? Do I have to actually manage my app ID and app code in the client? We recognize that. So what's the next option? Next option is introduce a Lambda. Now what you can do is say, hey, instead of the client making the calls directly to the here APIs, no, no, no. We'll, we'll have this Lambda sitting as a microservice in between. There we can register that app ID and that app code in the environment variable so it's not managed on the client anymore. We can have a centralized way of handling failover. And then on top of that, hey, we might want to enable caching on a few of these services. We could do so right there. You know what? This is something that you could have done prior to today. You could have set this all up. But it meant you had to do all the work. You're ready to go into those complex cloud formation configs and API gateways and setting up the Lambda, making sure all the code that talks to the here API is, is correct, setting up the environment there. See, already that emotional, no, that, that's too much. That's a barrier to entry to get into those location services. So of course, it's exciting to announce that we're going to make available, as of right now, today, you can use any one of these new serverless applications in the repository. You want to understand, hey, I have the latitude and longitude of something. What's nearby? What are the points of interest? If I want to go from point A to B to C, what's the best routing? If I need to see a graphical representation of something or present that inside of my app, go ahead. Start using it. You can't say it's going to be tough. I mean, you might want to do that if you're playing Scotty. Aye, it's going to take hours or days or whatever. But actually, as you just saw, it's only going to take a few moments. Because all you have to do is search in that repository, find the service that you're looking for. And when you deploy it, guess what? It's going to pop up and say, hey, what's that app ID and app code? So you'll have to do that. You got that from developer.here.com. You're done. And now deploy, it's ready to go. Ready to, ready to call right now, here. Easy. So no excuses. We are very excited to have this, to be part of the initial offering in the serverless repository. We hope that you're excited to start using these services uh, yourself. And I want to thank uh, AWS for making this 
very possible for the developer community, and we're certainly excited to be involved. Thank you so much. Thanks, Michael. Thank you so much. To show, just to quickly show what Michael was describing and how easy it should be for someone to go create these microservices for locations, let's go search for it. Michael, what was the name of the app that you want me to go configure? I don't think it's showing on this. Geocode. Okay, we'll go Geocode. Or One of those. Sure. Does that sound good? Sure. So look at this Geocode by Hair Technologies. It's not showing. It's not showing. Oh, okay. it is not showing. No, now, no, obviously, no, I have to press a button for it to show. So, it's sorry about that. Let's start that again, Michael. So we'll search for geocode. We'll see that we have actually matches that come together because they're related applications. I click on geocode, and now you have an application name, the hair app code, the hair app AID, I believe. And all you need to do is configure these values with whatever the values you get and click deploy, and as you had shown earlier, we will kick off the process to get you those microservices in your account within seconds. As our partners contribute to this, as our developers think about writing less to, to get more, the serverless repository will enable that. Developers sharing solutions, customers connect our companies, connecting with customers, and ultimately everybody moving faster with, uh, with the serverless platform. So with that, I'll, I'll conclude this talk. I really appreciate everyone coming out and spending time. I know it's Thursday at 4, and people want to get to another replay party. But I will take a few questions, if folks have, have any, from the, from the crowd. And uh, I'm, I'm, I, I'll encourage Michael and Daniel to, to join me if there are any questions uh, specific for them. Yes? That's right. So the service is in preview. Apologies, I didn't mention that earlier. You will have to sign up for the service, and we will make it available to those who sign up. Sure, in the next couple of days. So, the, the, so as, as we grow into the system on both construction of code, which is what Coaster helps with, setting up the infrastructure for project planning, for other things, because they provide templates, just like blueprints were, we're going to have a deeper integration with them over time. But the idea really is ready to build, ready to go, serverless applications you can use right away, provided by the community and by perhaps someone else in, uh, in your organization. Anyone else? Sure. We, so um, it's, it's these are serverless applications. We will be introducing additional integrations. The, the, the serverless resources that you can create today with the SAM spec are Lambda Functions, API Gateway APIs, DynamoDB, Kinesis Streams, S3 objects. We will be extending that to step functions over time, for sure. Sure. That is correct. So uh, even at preview, we have shipped our SDKs and CLI that enable you to do this in a more continuously deployment framework work. Um, and th those are available for those who will be signed in, and the SDK is available for download immediately. Please. Do you have plans to Sure, that's a good question. So we're starting off with providing an open source way of customers to be able to get these simple starting applications, perhaps even more elaborate ones. Over time, obviously, we will have a more deeper integration for monetization. Those plans are not as crisp as I can share with you here, but uh, we will be making sure the serverless application repository is connected where customers already are. As I mentioned a little while ago, while ago one of the tenants we took for the service is find it anywhere. And then once you do that, then you have to add the other things that help so, uh, c customers or partners uh, to be able to monetize on that. Suppose I have an API gateway that's an output, and I have a static you know, S3 website, and I want to hit that API gateway. How is there something that I can use to copy the output from the API gateway to the S3 bucket that holds the static code that would like, you know, invoke that? Is it like a post book function? So if you look at the SAM spec, and this is where you will have to do a little bit of understanding what the SAM spec allows you, it allows you to set up these APIs. It allows you to be able to have the API hit the Lambda function that updates the S3 bucket. That integration is already working. What we're helping with is the ease of construction and using of that and in scenarios that enable you, perhaps with a peer who has built something, to say, I want to see what you did. Could you share this application with me? And when they're shared, you can deploy it in your account. And then look at the resources that were created. Use the existing tools that you're familiar with to make sure that those connections make sense to you. And that's the, that, that will be how you would, you would do it. Yep. 
Sure. So as I said, we, you know, one of the other tenants is private and public sharing. Both are a tenant of the service. So you can share this serverless application, one function, more functions, other resources, with one account, many accounts that you know of, or make it public. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an option. It's a choice. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. I hope this was helpful. And uh, please do sign up. We're in preview. And we'll, we'll get you guys get started with it. Thanks.